retention and, and uh, just better growing conditions. So how can we grow that organic matter in our own backyards? That's what we want to do. And uh, bum, 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 soil texture, we'll skip over that. That's a lot to not really talk about. But the great thing about compost is if you do it right, the texture of it is is fine. It's great. It'll it'll hold up. It's resistant to erosion. It holds moisture. It provides aeration. So this is more about soil generally. We'll skip over this. You guys know about soil texture, particle diameter size. This this is a big deal when we talk about composting later in this presentation about getting a two inch particle sizes or smaller when you're when you're making your pile. So we'll talk about what that means. But smaller the better when it when it comes to chipping. We're gonna skip over this soil stuff. Just don't wanna. Ah, so let's let's start here. All right. So composting is really important because it's it's a way we can improve our soils and the kind of you know traditional farm model in the United States conventionally we do a lot of monoculture that really wreaks havoc on the soil. And uh, you know rule number one in gardening should be never leave bare soil. You should always have something on the soil. Um, anytime you leave the, the soil bare, you know, you get cracking, you get uh, uh, erosion, you get uh, loss of life, loss of fertility. And uh, what, what we're finding is that um, right now we're actually depleting topsoil in this country faster than we're, we're growing it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about cover crops, but also at the backyard level, what can we do with, with composting? Um, so how do we keep the soil where it's at? It's all about soil conservation and growing for fertility. This is a cool thing. Anybody ever seen one of these before? A roller crimper. Man, what do you think this is for? Green manure. Green manure. I love it. So green manure. So they've got these really cool, uh, you know, kind of helical chevron blades on this attachment to this tractor. And what it's doing is instead of tilling the soil like you might with, uh, you know, some discs or a tiller, uh, this is actually cutting or, or kind of crimping a cover crop such as, you know, crimson clover or, or ryegrass, uh, maybe a few inches above the soil. And this is going to lay it down and it's going to decompose in place. And at the same time, provide you a mulch that you can actually plant within. And uh, this, is, this is a great technique that they're, that they're really promoting these days with the NRCS, that's the Resource Con Natural Resource Conservation Service, and they'll actually pay farmers equip money for, um, for using this practice. It's a BMP, it's a best management practice, roller crimping. So, maybe a month ago you should have planted a mixture of crimson clover, which is a legume, something that pulls nitrogen out of the air and it's going to stick it in the soil. And you might also have mixed it with some ryegrass to, to get cover on the ground. The, the ryegrass will grow first, cover the soil, but then here comes the clover. And right when the clover is in bloom, that's when you would crimp. If you crimp before that, what would happen to that clover if it hadn't flowered yet and you it crimped it? Seeds. It wouldn't make seeds, so it would have popped back up like a weed. So you want it to flower, to, to let it think it's going through its reproductive cycle. And, but you don't want it to make seeds. You want to cut it before it actually sends all that nitrogen from the roots to the seeds, because then you would have a seed problem. Uh, but right when it's like 80 to 100% bloom, your field is covered with this beautiful pollinator-friendly crimson clover, that's when you would take the roller crimper, fold it down, it decomposes, you could graze on it, you could uh, you know, plant behind it. So roller crimper, that's what we should put on our tractors. This guy's really cool, One Straw Revolution. Here's a book about him. Um, he, he was all about no-till agriculture, and that's what we're talking about. No tilling. When you disturb the surface of the topsoil, you're, you're breaking apart these amazing fungal communities. You're breaking apart all these arthropod habitats and stuff, and uh, you're, you're compacting the soil. All bad things. So, um, dun -dun 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 -dun. We'll kind of skip over this. Uh, here are some <laughs> other examples of cover crops. So. The whole idea of, of cover crops is to protect the soil and also grow your own fertilizer. Some plants are better at uh, fixing nitrogen than others. They have special bacteria that live on their roots and fungi that basically pull inert nitrogen out of the air and make it into nitrate that plants can absorb. And you can take advantage of this, this fact that some plants do, like 
The Crimson Clover has a lot of nitrogen. Alfalfa is another good one. Um, these things add fertility in the soil. Something you could grow at your house that you might already have is a redbud tree. Redbuds actually are a nitrogen fixing tree. So if you plant around it, other plants will benefit from that nitrogen that it's bringing into the soil community. So that's cool. Um, man, anybody from Kansas? My mom's from Kansas. Manhattan, Kansas, if you believe it or not. So uh, there is a place out there, the Land Institute in Salinas, and they have been breeding wheat varieties to be perennial, meaning they, they you don't, you know, pull them up every year. And uh, what they're finding is they have amazing root structure. These are 10 foot long root structures. And all this time, what have we been doing? We've been focusing our efforts breeding annual wheat varieties that you have to buy, what, every year, because they're annual varieties and you have to go back to the company store. If we had focused just traditional plant breeding techniques to perennial varieties of, of grains like this, we would have solved the Dust Bowl years ago. And uh, we would have the yields. Well, we would have better yields if we'd spent more attention on it anyway. So something to, to think about. We don't just have to plant until and plant until. Think of all the emissions those tractors put up every time you, you do another treatment to the field. You can reduce that with a perennial grain like that. Um, Ooh, all right, so I know this is the master gardeners, right? But that doesn't just mean plants. Let's talk fungi. If you add up all the species of plants there are, multiply by like six, that's how many species of fungi there are. And you can use these things, the, the different species of mushroom and molds and, fun, and yeast and all these things can help you in the garden. And so take a look at this picture here. It's very telling. Um, this plant, has a, you know, a main kind of tap root and two lateral roots, but all that white stuff, what is that? It's mycelium, it's fungal. It attaches itself sometimes just on the surface, but sometimes it actually digs into a plant. And what it gets from the plant is sugar, because there's no sun down here in the soil. You need photosynthetic leaves to create sugar, and they send that sugar down, and the mycelium, it, it gets the sugar, but it's not a one-way street. Back to the plant, the mycelium sends nutrients because the mycelium is much finer and permeates the soil way better than the roots of the plant do. So they, they work together and the, the mycelium shares nutrients and uh, the plant gets, gets some cool sugar. And what's really cool, they've used radioactive dyes to, to see if nutrients from one plant get swapped to another through the mycelial membrane, and indeed, this happens. So, nature's original internet, it's out there working every day. The largest living organism on the planet is a fungal mat, a mycelial mat, I think out in Oregon or Washington, some 2,000 acres in size or something. So, it's all about promoting the life in the soil, and we'll get to this compost soon, but the more soil life we have, the better everything will be, because if, if you treat your soil as a monoculture and, and you destroy certain things, you, you then are more susceptible to diseases. The more things you have to outcompete uh, things, the more you rotate if you're doing like vegetables, um, the better. So diversity is good. And, and one, uh, one thing just to point out on this slide is, I like this little, the circle of, of life here. You have decomposers, things that, you know, uh, break down organic material to store the nutrients to the soil. That nourishes the producers, the plants, that makes food for the consumers, the animals who you know, defecate or spread the seeds of the plants and work together to pollinate, things like that. Soil life, food webs, cool. All right, let's get into compost, boom. So man, how many of you have bought one of a plastic contraption and you threw all the stuff in there and nothing happened and you're just like, dang. Yeah, I've done it too. I even bought, I bought like that exact thing for my parents, right? They, I, I think they, they store cushions in it or something. I don't know. But anyway, so composting does take effort. Now, you know, you can, it's one of those things. You can spend some money and get some automation or you can do it really cheap and, you know, use your back. So um, just beware, there is effort involved, but you can be smart about it and reduce that effort. Um, 
Ta-da. Okay, that doesn't really tell us anything. Let's see, humus. Humus, right? It's the totally <laughs> decomposed, finished state. It's stable, organic matter. This is what you want to build up in your soil. It's kind of a magnet. Uh, there's something called cation exchange, and that's what it's all about. Humus holds on to nutrients in a way that makes nutrients available to plants. So their roots and the mycelium that grow on the roots, they can get into soil that has a lot of humic matter in it. Um, there's also things like humic acids and fulvic acids that become important, but uh, anyway, humus. It's totally decomposed stuff. We like it. That's what we want out of compost. Um, so what are some of the benefits, right? That's what I'm supposed to talk about. Benefits of building soil with compost. You improve your soil till. So it's friability. Um, it, it's uh, resistance to compaction. It's ability to wick water away. Um, that's what tilt is about. Uh, so the more humic matter, the better. Um, 